Cellular transport is a basic process of the cells, and it's essentially how does the cell get stuff into the cell or out of the cell. Now, you can divide it down into two basic categories, passive versus active transport. Passive transport is, like you suggest, it's passive, which means just like you being a passive observer of TV, it doesn't require any energy from your point of view. In the cells, typically the energy is being provided in the form of ATP. Whereas active transport does require that the cell spend some energy in order to get material into the cell or toss it out of the cell. And again, that is usually in the form of ATP. Now, those of you who have taken physics know to move something generally does take some energy. So where's the energy coming from? It's usually coming from the environment in the form of heat energy. Now, within passive transport, there's three subdivisions. There's diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. Now, the most important one to understand is diffusion, because that's what facilitated diffusion and osmosis are based on. So what is diffusion? Diffusion is the movement of an, a group of particles from an area where there's lots of them to an area where there's not so much of them. Now, how do they do that? Why do they do this? Well, you should know that all things are made of atoms, and they're not sitting still. They're actually moving. Even material like me, that's a solid, my atoms right now are kind of jiggling a little bit. They're not moving very far, but they're still jiggling. In a gas or a liquid, like inside of your cells, your cells are made mostly of liquid, and so the molecules are actually able to flow and flow around, or flow and move around. Now, there's something about the universe that just despises order. It's called entropy, and entropy in our universe is always increasing. And it's why, when I drop these, you're going to see them scatter, because if this was a nice, wonderful universe, they would stay in this nice cube form, but instead... Did they know that there wasn't any Skittles over there? No, they did not. It's just that they move in random directions, and there's a lot more Skittles here than there was over there. So they just spread. We could call that diffusion of Skittles. That was simple. Now, what if I had had this happen inside of a... Well, if I drop Skittles now, they bounce a fair amount. If I drop them so they don't bounce, you see that they're not moving out. Why? Because they can't fit through the glass. In order to allow them to fit through, to facilitate their movement, I would have to punch holes. And that's what cells do. If a molecule or uh, particle is too large to fit through the cell membrane, or perhaps it has a charge and th therefore can't get through, the cell membrane can have protein pores or channels which allow those uh, particles to go through the cell membrane easily. But again, they're just moving from where there's lots of them to where there's not so much. The last kind of passive transport is called osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of water through a semi-permeable membrane. And it's a special case of diffusion where it's focused solely on the water movement, nothing else. All right, on to active transport. And again, this is when the cell is having to spend its energy in order to get stuff to come in or out. Now, the most simplest to understand of this are the pumps that are in the membrane made of proteins. So these proteins are like regular pumps, they pump stuff. And just like if you're in a boat and you have a hole in the, in the bottom of the boat, you ram a hole through, you see water moves in passively. Why? Because there's a lot of water on the outside, not so much on the inside. That's like facilitated diffusion. Well, how would you get that water to move from inside the boat, where there's not so much, back into the ocean? You'd have to pump it out, either with a bucket or with a bilge pump or some other kind of pump. That's what facilitated diffusion is. But again, it's spending energy to move stuff against a concentration gradient or difference between concentrations. The next one is something called endocytosis. Endo is a root word that means into. Cyto means the cell. All right? So how does that work? That's how you get a large chunk, maybe even something that is the size of in another cell, say a bacterial cell being eaten by a white blood cell. And if it's too big to fit through any pore in the membrane, how do you get it through? Let's suppose this is a bacteria and this is a white blood cell. This wants to get that inside so it can kill it. So what this white blood cell starts doing is it starts extending its membrane. And extends it more. And finally merges these two pieces of membrane. And now this bacteria here has moved inside of the cell, and it's trapped inside of this little sac. That's endocytosis. The reverse of this is called exocytosis, out of the cell process. How does that work? Well, let's suppose we have a cell, 
and it just made some large molecule or a group of molecules that it needs to dump out. Now, to keep things organized, it'll put them inside of sacs. So let's suppose these are a bunch of these molecules that are too large to go through the membrane by themselves. So we put them in a sac. What do we do? We allow this small sac called a vesicle, which means just a small vessel or sac, we allow it to move to the membrane. Once it's at the membrane, it starts to merge with it and dumps its materials out. That's exocytosis. So, endocytosis is sucking in, exocytosis is dropping out. Now, just like when you ingest or take in particles through your mouth, that's endo your body, you talk about, I ingested a Big Mac and I ingested a Coke. Well, we usually don't use the verb ingest, so instead we talk about we eat the Big Mac, we drink the Coke. Just like you break it down into solids and liquids, they also break it down for uh, endocytosis. There is phagocytosis, which means eating by the cell process, and pinocytosis, which means drinking by the cell process. What do you think the difference is? This is taking in solids by this is taking in liquids by this process of and that's active and passive transport.